Hi there, this is Love Johar. Thank you so much for tuning in this video and thank you so much for watching this channel. So, let us try to understand some questions uh, regarding the Ash 27001 auditing for LA uh, side of things and also for practical implementation of ISMS, right? So, many people were asking me regarding the interview questions. So, this is the first series regarding the interview questions. If you are able to understand and if you are able to like these interview questions feel free to add in the comment section and i'll keep on creating this series right so let us see what is the first question first of all which of the following is the most appropriate action okay if the lead auditor observes non-conformity that could result in an organization's isms objective being compromised right so what is the most appropriate action if the lead auditor observes any non-conformity okay should the lead auditor immediately inform the top management about the non-conformity? Or should the lead auditor write a major non-conformity in the audit report and move on to the next area of concern? Should the lead auditor suggest a solution to the organization for the immediate correction right away for the finding that they have observed? Or should the lead auditor conduct further investigation to ensure the non-conformity is documented correctly, right? So you need to choose your own answer first. And pause this video for now so that you choose your own answer. And from my understanding, I think this is the right answer. They further have to first analyze into more, dig, dig into more details to understand whether the non-conformity is actually correctly documented or not. Because sometimes uh, there are errors as well. Sometimes we are not too sure. So we need to have a confirmation over here. That's why we need to con uh, conduct further investigations in order to make sure that the non-conformity is rightly documented, right? Okay. Now let us see the answer. A lead auditor must gather enough evidence to justify a non-conformity before formally raising it. The audit process requires due diligence. Auditors should avoid jumping into conclusion without proper evidence in place, right? Next question is, in the risk treatment process, the selection of controls must be based upon what? Okay, so when we treat the risk, definitely in order for risk mitigation to happen, we need to select the controls, right? So now this for the selection of controls must be based on what? How should we select the controls based on what, right? Do we need to select the controls based on the organization's risk appetite? Do we need to select the controls based on the organization's available financial resources? Do we need to select the controls based on the annex controls only? Or do we need to select the controls as per the risk identified in the risk assessment and their impact on the achieving ISMS objectives? So I think this is the right answer again, uh, because we need to make sure as per the risk identified in the risk assessment, we need to choose the controls accordingly, right? So this is the right answer, okay? The selection of controls must be aligned with the risk identified in the risk assessment side of things considering their potential impact on the organization's ability to meet the ISMS objectives, right? And NXA only provides you a reference, but it is not an exhaustive list, right? So next question is, which document is mandatory under ISO 27001 serving as a proof that an organization has conducted a risk treatment process? So which document basically proves that the organization has conducted a risk treatment process? Whether information security policy is that document, whether risk treatment plan is a document, whether statement of applicability is a document, or whether the internal audit report is a document confirming the organization has conducted risk treatment process. So you can pause this video now if you want. But from my understanding, I think this is the right answer. The statement of applicability will actually tell you all the list of controls being implemented as part of the risk treatment process, right? So you need to look for the statement of applicability. Yeah. The statement of applicability is mandatory and specifies which controls from Annex A are applicable and the rationale behind these controls, inclusion or exclusion. It also justifies why certain controls are selected based on the risk treatment process. So similarly, we have other questions also, but I want to keep this video short. If you like this video, please comment and I'll keep on creating more videos like this. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Take care for now. We'll discuss the remaining question in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.